Hey guys, thanks for coming back for part three, the final installation on this auto charging 12 volt project. Uh, if you are really into this type of a video, please like and subscribe so I know what kind of content to make in the future. So the real question here is what is the reason for spending the time to do something like this project? And the answer is that it, one of the weaknesses of these cars is that 12 volt battery can die if the car sits idle for a long period of time, either being because of being parked or because you're on vacation or parking in the airport. And the cars don't, at least this generation, don't recharge the 12 volt batteries if they get uh, low. So this is really a project to try to resolve that since we have a 400 volt high capacity battery just sitting idle in the background. So if you haven't watched part one or two of this series, please go back and watch that for the history. Uh, real quickly though, the, the block diagram here shows how the car normally performs where it gets uh, wakes up from some event and then during that wake up it'll check whether the 12 volt battery is charged or not and if it's not charged it will go ahead and start a charging sequence. The issue of course is that uh, it has to wake up first. So the plan here is to take it, the voltage signal off of the battery run it through a voltage divider and then run that uh, 0 to 5 volt signal into a microcontroller to monitor it and then find a way to actively wake up the car. So in the first prototype that we put together we used uh, the schematic where we had a servo motor that would go ahead and wake the car up by physically pushing the lock button on the door to be able to activate the wake mode. Uh, now we're looking at trying to remove that by putting a digital signal right into the uh, body domain controller through that lock signal, uh, lock switch. And this is what you would have to do to be able to get it to work. So basically the Arduino mic microcontroller needs to inject a either a high Z or basically a disconnected state to a grounded state through a 1K ohm resistor to emulate the button being pushed on the door lock switch. Uh, this is a quick schematic of the uh, components for this latest generation version. I won't read through it, but if you want to pause the video and look at the uh, wiring diagram for those that are looking at doing this on their own, uh, I included it here. The uh, user interface is based on a list of screens or menu selections that uh, you can rotate through using a uh, digital encoder knob and then uh, the push button on the knob would be a way to select one of the menu selections. So I went ahead and took some dimensions and went into uh, AutoCAD to draw up a case that would fit all the components that uh, we have and then went ahead and 3D printed out uh, the first prototype case uh, took about three or four hours to print it out on my fairly slow printer, but I uh, got the job done. So the main components on this latest version is using a Arduino Nano. So it's a very small size and low power requirements and will fit in this very small case. A uh, low cost OLED, OLED screen and also a rotary digital encoder. Uh, with the ability to push the button on the top to be able to uh, get a select signal. Uh, all that goes together into the case. Um, everything is uh, hand wired so it's uh, pretty much a spaghetti mess inside right now with the way it's uh, put together in the prototype. Okay, it looks like the unit is pulling about 30 milliamps under normal conditions. And the big screen on the OLED, it's uh, playing a little bit more, about 32 milliamps. So, should be okay with the onboard 12 volt to 5 volt regulator on the Arduino Nano to hold to handle that power. So the list of software features, I won't read through the list. Uh, you can pause the video and take a look. But one thing I wanted to mention here, I also included a one hour wait time once a trigger event occurs. So in case there's any malfunction that the system doesn't just continually uh, trigger a lock function over and over again so you can't get in the car. So it'll 
wait for one hour before it will allow for another triggering, triggering event to occur. That's kind of a safety precaution. Hi, we're going to take a quick look at the Gen 3 system installed in the car. So first of all, the voltage calibration is set to be pretty close, so I'm not going to mess with that. I'll go ahead and hit the reset button on the back, then we can look at the boot up screens. You can see the uh, software identification and version numbers and date codes come up when it's first booting. After that, it opens up to a menu that shows that the system is active, and the other box will indicate whether the system has been triggered or not, so you have an idea of you know, some overnight, for, let's say, whether it was triggered. Turning the knob goes to the other menus. Here has the uh, voltage bar graph, so when the bar graph, graph gets down to the empty state, that means it's hit the trigger voltage set point, and that's the when it will activate the door lock. Uh, you can adjust the calibration by pressing down the button and turning, and when you release it will write it to the permanent memory. I'm not going to mess with that since it's pretty well calibrated. Uh, the voltage trigger adjusts, so that point at which it's going to trigger. Uh, we'll just go ahead and demonstrate. If I hold it down, I can rotate it to a value. We'll hold it to, let's say, 11.9. It will write it to the permanent memory and is now set to 11.9. Even if it loses power, it will retain that value. Uh, the large scale screen, so you really don't need to have a separate voltage monitor. Uh, you can enable or disable the lock mechanism, door locking mechanism, if you want. Uh, let's see, just by pressing down the button. You can test the door locks. I'm going to have to close the door here real quickly. So, with all the doors closed, if I hold this down, there you can hear the door actually locking, so we know it's working. That should have triggered that the system was activated, which it does. So, all I need to do is push down on the button again to reset that. And now it's uh, reset. So, that's a quick rundown of the menu screens on the device.